Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at chapter 3 of the Mythical Man Month, which is called The Surgical Team, and deals with how to allocate subtasks for a project to your teammates. The first part of allocating tasks is recognizing differences in the ability levels of the people on your team. Some people are just better, in whatever way it would be relevant to define it, than others. And beyond ability, there are differences in interests that people should account for when assigning tasks to the extent it is possible so that everyone is engaged in problems that stretch and compel them. The author talks at some length about the concept of a 10x programmer, or someone who is 10 times as productive as an average engineer. These quasi-mythical people are hard to find, harder to hire, and hardest to retain in the industry. The preoccupation with highly productive engineers suggests that one is best off employing the minimum number of 10x engineers as possible to complete a project thus minimizing communication friction and having only superstars in your orbit. The problem with this is that small teams, say 10 engineers for example, of superstars are still slow for large-scale projects. Despite being amazing, they can still only do so much in a day. That aside, there is a lot of domain knowledge to be grasped in a single corner of a large project, which precludes performance on that theoretical highest level that the 10x engineer is capable of across multiple corners of the domain. So, when creating teams for large-scale system, what is the wisest composition of engineers? The book offers an example from a man named Harlan Mills. In short, Mills' proposal suggests this, that the segments of a large-scale project should be handled by teams organized like a surgical team, where each person has an intentional role rather than a team of hog butchers, where all the roles are essentially the same. We'll get to each role individually, but here are all the titles. Surgeon, Co-Pilot, Administrator, Editor, Secretary, Program Clerk, Toolsmith, Tester, and Language Lawyer. The surgeon is the lead developer. This is the person who makes the specs, who write the code, who is the 10x developer, who has extensive knowledge context for the project to run well, and who does the tasks we associate as programming, as well as creating documentation. The copilot is the surgeon's right hand. This is someone who is able to do any, or at least many, of the main parts of building that software that the surgeon is responsible for, and is available for consultation as the surgeon is designing and brainstorming what the final product would look like. The administrator is someone who handles ancillary tasks like the arrangement of the rest of the people on the team, probably managing pivotal tracker or JIRA tracker stories, interfacing with the rest of the organization, and so on. Typically we would think of product managers as this role. The editor is someone who takes documentation written by the surgeon and makes it more robust, clear, concise, accessible to a wider audience who don't have specific domain knowledge, and so on. Secretaries are helpful to the editor and the administrator, and thus take on some of those ancillary tasks as mentioned before. The program clerk is someone who ensures that code runs reliably in different contexts and reconciles private code to the public repositories. To be honest, as I understand it, this role is outdated as the industry uses Git for code difference reconciliation and good testing practices to ensure reliable behavior. And incidentally, the toolsmith is also out of date, so I'll pass over that one as well. The tester does what it sounds like and is responsible for making sure that new functions and programs have sufficient test coverage that covers the main and edge use cases. Finally is the language lawyer, who is responsible for knowledge of the particularities of the language being used in the program's execution. This individual may be consulted to find out if there is a more optimal manner in which to execute some function or part of the program. This person can serve multiple teams. Now that brings me to an interesting point, which is that it seems odd to have one engineer, the surgeon, do the lion's share of the coding while the rest are in his orbit to make him more productive. Noble though that may be, it seems unwise to allocate that many people to it full time. It seems more likely that some of these roles would be consolidated down to a single employee, such as the product manager who handles affairs with the rest of the organization. 
and engineers typically get more into the field of code, not exclusively to write documentation or to do the tangential to programming tasks. I've never seen this arrangement in the real world, but it would be curious to see how it would work and if it would still be effective in light of the extensive and specialized tooling that exists today that did not when this book was written. I suspect that purely by virtue of the tools we have now that didn't exist in 1975, it's, must, it's much easier for you or I to be what would have been a 10x engineer back then. Perhaps the takeaway from this chapter should not be so much in the particularities of the roles and identifying who should fill them, but rather in understanding the comparative advantages of each team member and allocating tasks in such a way that his or her time is more effectively utilized. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it thought-provoking. And I'll see you all in the next one.